We're talking about acquisition quality. Can everyone see this? Let me see if I can adjust the focus a little bit and straighten that out. And, well, forget it. That's the old way of doing presentations. No color, no pictures, no excitement. Boring. That's why one of the fastest growing segments of the computer software business is desktop presentation graphics. Computer programs that let you create your own quality, professional looking desktop presentations. Today we begin a special two part look at desktop presentation graphics on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by the Software Publishers Association, which reminds you that software piracy is a federal offense. When a few people steal software, everyone loses. Additional funding is provided by CompuServe, by PC Connection and Mac Connection, by Byte Magazine and Bix, the Byte Information Exchange, and by Intel Corporation, Personal Computer Enhancement. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe. This is Gary Kildall. And Gary, as you can hear, I've got a little computer virus in my output device here, so you're going to have to talk a lot okay. today. <laughs> this is an output device, by the way, and I'll prove it to you by showing you the ports on this little box over here. What you do with this great little box is if you're preparing desktop presentations on your computer, then you want 35 millimeter slides, that's what you get from this. Drop a standard roll of 35 millimeter film in here, press the button, and boom, you've got 35 millimeter slides. That's great. Gary, I know you use computers to prepare the presentations you work on and your role in digital research. How has the use of a computer changed the way you do a presentation? It makes it a whole lot easier. <laughs> that's a, that's right. a real big advantage. Um, first of all, you don't have to worry about interfacing or working with a graphics designer and waiting, say, a week or two weeks to get the slides back like we're used to right. in the old days. A second thing is just the economics involved. And you can produce the slides right there in your own office and uh, or overhead transparencies, right. whatever it happens to be. So just much, much cheaper to do. And a third thing I think is really important for uh, procrastinators like myself. Or busy, I, let's busy, say, exactly. busy executives. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is that uh, you can make changes to those slides right in the very last minute. For example, if you are going to do an overhead transparency presentation, you might as well use an LCD overlay uh -huh. on your laptop right yeah. there, and you can make changes right on the airplane as you're going to the, to the discussion. Gary, today we'll take a look at some of the top-rated desktop presentation graphics packages for the Macintosh, including More 2, Aldus Persuasion, PowerPoint, and MacroMind Director. Now, if you don't have one of these neat little boxes and you do need hard copy from your desktop presentations you've created on a computer, you have to sooner or later interface with the Graphics Service Bureau. We begin with a report on one such bureau in San Francisco. Chartmasters is a graphics service bureau in San Francisco that relies on some very expensive professional equipment to produce visual materials with a professional look. The company can complete a project from scratch or just create the output based on a client's design. Chartmasters recently added a new department to deal with clients using desktop presentation software. The new desktop services department accepts files by modem and creates finished 35 millimeter slides or color prints. The arrival of inexpensive PC-based presentation software is beginning to have an effect at the professional level. Custom production work that goes through a company like this is not cheap. It's expensive. Um, and now people are trying to save money and that's the beauty of the desktop presentation tools is companies can achieve the kind of professional quality image that a custom production shop produces, but they can do it for a lesser cost and they have more control. That's the big sell with desktop presentations. They want control, they want to make the changes, they want to feel free at the last minute. For clients that still feel shaky about doing their own desktop designs, Chartmasters offers artistic help and technical support for software problems. But the final look of the graphic depends as much on the quality of output as on the talent that created the original design. The office at Chartmasters includes a photo lab, special effects and animation cameras, and a crew of professional designers. The work we do for desktop clients really narrows down our, down our responsibility. The work we do for clients narrows down our responsibility to doing the imaging. But we also find that no computer is so simple and no program is so simple that people still don't need help in understanding how to use it well. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Maria Gabriel.
Joining us in the studio now is David Whitney with Symantec, and next to David, Connie Clark of Microsoft. Gary? Stuart, I think we can all kind of remember the days in which we uh, produced slides for presentations. Not that long ago. Yeah, fifty, hundred dollars per slide, and, yeah, yeah. and sometimes the whole presentation would cost uh, maybe two, three thousand mm -hmm. dollars. And now we can get a whole computer system for the, same, for price. the same price. Uh, mm -hmm. Connie, what uh, what is your view about how presentation graphics are being used nowadays? Who uses them and so forth? We see a lot of business people using them, doing uh, departmental meetings, doing uh, project meetings, and it's also used quite a bit for doing training uh, for development of, of people, both in companies and for training on different products. And you see it also, that, can you do the entire presentation all the way down to producing the slides and so forth on the desktop? Absolutely. You get everything from speaker's notes to handouts for your audience to 35 millimeter slides or overheads, any mm -hmm. type of output that you really need. Uh, David, you have a product called More2, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, could you give us an idea of what it's all about and maybe a little demo? Well, sure. Um, well, the approach to doing a presentation with more too is to first to begin with an outline. I just happen to have an outline here of a uh, business uh, conference presentation I'm going to do, so I think I could walk you through actually okay. doing that Great. right now. The, the uh, outline is what, of the, of the points you would make during right. the presentation? Right. Actually, there, it's the actual text that will appear on the slides, okay. and uh, I'll just go down through here and show you each of the bold-faced uh, uh, text there you see is the title of the slide. And so by working with an outline, I can work on the content without necessarily making all the aesthetic decisions right away and I can move things around. When I'm uh, done with the outline, I can just move to the lower left-hand corner here and press on the bullet chart view. And more two will go ahead and generate a series of bullet charts for me automatically and I can have this preset uh, styles or whatever. Um, this particular one is in black and white. Um, when you say generate automatically, is it defaulting to a certain It defaults to a certain format. Now okay. I can come over here and I can pick from a variety of styles if I want. Mm -hmm. And uh, but this is the one that I have that I'm working with right now. Um, I can also drop graphics directly into this, um, and that's one of the things that we encourage people to do is to use graphics. A lot of first-time presenters tend to overuse text, so I can put a graphic over here, and this is an Apple logo, and uh, I, something that I frequently use. But we'll just take it out of there. Now, uh, what I'd like to do here is I'd, I'd like to add a little bit of color, so um, I can I can select this background here, and we'll go here, and we'll pick a color here. We'll pick a nice rich uh, uh, dark blue here. And I can, uh, I want to bring out the text, so I'll select uh, all the text on here. And we'll move to uh, text color, and I'll make it yellow because the yellow looks stands out really mm -hmm. well. And this particular presentation I'm going to do live. That is, I'm going to do right on the screen here, so I can ask more too to show me what it would look like. And that's what it will currently look like. Um, a particularly professional looking color scheme is to add what's known as a graduated color background and I can add that right now switch that right on there and let's just take a look at what that would look like there um, we have uh, now, moving is that done automatically too uh, no well actually what this was I previously set this up so that I'd have okay. a graduated okay. color but uh, you can pick from a library of graduated color backgrounds and then add them right to but this. Would you expect that this would normally be uh, would you produce a slide or would you do actually do a presentation like in front of the group right off the computer system with this? Well, this particular one I will um, use on a large screen monitor and I'll mm -hmm. do that. And I get um, the benefit of that is that I can make last minute changes. Mm -hmm. I can walk right mm -hmm. into the conference room and uh, do my presentation. Plus, I can use special effects. More too has a variety of transition effects and I can use those. Show, in the show some of those features. Okay. There. So mm -hmm. I'll come up here and I can pick uh, slideshow mm -hmm. settings here. And this is a little like television here. I can pick the effect. Now, these are known as dissolves and wipes. Now, here's a transition of moving from the lower right hand corner to the upper so I can close the dialog box right now and let's just take a look at what that would look like so you mm -hmm. see the transition mm -hmm. so and that makes your presentation interesting and um, so if you look, look more possessed to it, right if you look a little <laughs> bit like NBC News I think right. the, uh, people will uh, give you the benefit now, of that. Um, Connie, can you tell us a little bit about the Microsoft product? Uh, yes, Microsoft PowerPoint is was actually the very first product created specifically for doing desktop presentations. Um, it's still the best-selling package today, and, and we think it's really a, a very fast and easy way to create any type of materials, whether it's overhead, 35-millimeter uh, mm -hmm. slides, or, or even flip charts for perhaps a one-on-one -on -one sales meeting. How, how would the approach of PowerPoint differ from, say, what we just saw with More2? PowerPoint works more on a storyboard type of feature where you really deal with all of your slides together and get a very visual p appearance of it uh -huh. versus working from an outline format. Okay. Well, well, show us PowerPoint, yeah. would you? Okay. Let me bring it up here. 
And you tell us what you're doing as you do it here, so you don't leave us in the Okay, dark. all I'm doing here is actually starting up some files. Uh-huh. Let's go ahead and bring these up. I'm opening a presentation that was actually start, it started in black and white, so this might be something you'd use for doing black and white overheads. Um, if we go to our slide sorter, you'll see what I mean by getting a vis very visual appearance of your presentation. You okay. see all of the More slides of the at one time. Point, yeah. Right. Now, let's say that we want to reorganize this presentation. I can very simply just take a slide there and drag it to where I want it to be mm -hmm. in my presentation. Very easy to reorganize it. And you'll notice, too, if we go and take a look at a slide here, we have a very consistent look throughout the presentation. This is done through a slide master that we have. Now, one common thing that we see done in presentations is that people who are doing um, presentations have done a lot of presentations in the past. They have libraries of slides that they've used, at least in the old technology. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, they'd have libraries <coughs> of PowerPoint presentations. So let's go ahead and open up another presentation that perhaps I had created before, or maybe this is from the finance department. Uh -huh. We copy this. If we open this up, I can simply select the slides by just dragging around those, copy them onto the clipboard, go back to my existing presentation, select where I want those to be, and paste those in. Mm -hmm. Very quickly, very easy. They picked up the slide masters, so they actually they don't look like they came from another presentation. Yeah. We also have a, a very powerful way of working with color called color schemes. The Mac has 16.8 million colors to work with. It's a little overwhelming for a business person to deal with. So we came up with this concept of color schemes. You pick a background color. So for example, let's go to our RV2 here. Then go ahead and pick a foreground color, or actually a number of foreground colors are suggested for you. Mm -hmm. Once you pick the foreground, a number of accent colors are suggested for you. So we simply select the color scheme we want, apply it to our slides, and my entire presentation has now been updated. Uh-huh, that's great. Now, uh, Connie, if you were to, to make a slide out of this, a um, uh, high-resolution slide, what mm -hmm. would that cost to, to I mean, use? Or a special device you'd be using? Or a we, uh, or would you use a service bureau? We, we, have, we actually ship a driver for Genographics, which is the top service bureau in the United States, uh -huh. in the box. So all you do is simply go like you would, we're going to print a presentation. It creates a file for you, and then you can send that over the modem to Genographics, uh -huh, uh -huh. and then you get your slides back the next day. And it's about $11 a slide, mm -hmm. depending on what type of a turnaround yeah. you need. Actually, if we're talking about hard copy and slides, you don't have to go to a photo lab or a service bureau to get slides. You can do it yourself now with a nifty new gadget called the Miras Film Printer. Here's a report. Two, two, Dr. Robert Markison is a hand surgeon in San Francisco. In addition to working with patients, he also teaches and lectures, making presentations to medical students and lay groups on various treatments and surgical techniques. To make his presentations more interesting, Dr. Markison, like any other presenter, uses visuals. He starts out drawing his ideas by hand, then he uses presentation graphics software like PowerPoint to create the graphics and text on his computer. Then, instead of going out to a service bureau to prepare slides, Dr. Markison prints his computer graphics directly onto film with a Miris film printer. Well, the advantage is it's a time-saving device. It's uh, certainly a money-saving device in terms of cost per slide. But more than that, it's a device for creative ideas because you can make many mistakes. You can make mistakes as you print to film, try several things, and uh, get them done quickly. Within an hour, usually, you can get development, uh, E6 processing of the type of film we use. And if you've made a horrible error overall, then you can just redo the whole process and still be within the same evening. In addition to being a surgeon, Dr. Markison is also an inventor. He's now marketing one of his inventions, a hand grip for windsurfers. And here, too, he turns to computer graphics and the Miris film printer for making his presentations. It's uh, made it seem as though there was a whole team working on this idea uh, rather than just one person. So I think anybody that likes to uh, communicate new and old ideas uh, would benefit from communicating them on slides. And this is a very quick, simple, uh, rapid kind of way to do it. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Maria Gabriel. With us in the studio now is Mark Sherman of Aldous Corporation and also David Kleinberg of Macromind. 
Mark, we think of the presentation graphics as being primarily a business tool. Uh, does a, a company have to have a graphics department, or can anybody use it in their corporation? Really, uh, the beauty of the product, Gary, is that with uh, persuasion based on uh, a particular type of technology that we develop called auto template technology, the average business person can create a wonderful presentation in very little time. In fact, most of us take about 30 or 40 minutes to prepare for a staff meeting. Right before the staff meeting. Right. <laughs> okay. So you, you're saying you've sort of built in the, the artist's ability inside the right. software. In fact, why don't I uh, give you a, a brief demo of how okay. auto template technology works. Uh, we, we were looking, we were, we were the latecomer in the market, frankly, and we looked at some of the other technology that was available available and uh, frankly we didn't see anything like this so what I'm doing here is I'm creating a title slide for a week uh, weekly st staff meeting and uh, I'll just type my name here and I'm done I've just created my first slide in fact let's take a look at it you'll see that I selected the Aldous black and white template for uh -huh. this um, you can select from a number of different template designs so you just enter text into a predetermined template precisely uh -huh. And this is the second slide that I had prepared just before we went on the air. Uh -huh. And this has a few bullets on it. Okay. So maybe what I should do now is take us to a slideshow showing you some of the other capabilities of, this, of the program. I'll just click all here. Put it on automatic. Okay, so where are we going? And what we're going to do here is we're going to take a, a look. Uh, this is actually an on-screen presentation, but one of the things I'd like to emphasize is that most of the people that use this software use it to produce black and white overheads and at the last minute. Now, it has all the color capabilities. Everything that you're seeing now is created within Persuasion. Uh -huh. And I guess another point I'd like to make is that we were really committed to providing all of the tools needed to create a presentation in one environment. So all the charting and graphing and drawing tools, clip art, uh, uh -huh. speaker notes and handouts that, that you're seeing were generated from within Persuasion. But you can import files, you can import uh, spreadsheets and so on. That's right. In fact, you can, you can actually import presentations from other products. We will, we will accept any scrapbook presentation, uh -huh. but certainly compatibility with all the major software. All right. I want David to get a chance to get MacroMind Director up and running sure, here. Sure. Let me uh, quit out of Persuasion here. Now, tell us a little bit about the output devices and so forth that you're able to control. Sure thing. Well, once again, most people are actually using the laser writer mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, typically in a network configuration, but there are other options uh, and we're seeing them come down in price. For example, some of the color printers, the HP PaintJet is a great example okay, of something. You have an example of, uh, of some printer. That's right. I actually brought some, uh, some hard copy. This might have just as easily been an overhead. Of mm -hmm. course, it would have shown okay. up a little poorly. So again, and you can take the output, put it right through a laser printer on a transparency. That's right. And w the beauty with Persuasion is I just changed the template to create this color presentation. I didn't have to do any of the design work. The uh -huh. program did it all, and this is actually a color overhead on a Tektronix printer. Now, what kind of price are we talking about in terms of a printer that would produce this kind of output? I think that's uh, actually in the seven or eight thousand dollar range from Tektronix. Of course, you, you have much higher end models and lower end models from Tektronix and other companies as well. Mm -hmm. All right, David. Now, uh, as Mark said, you know, seventy-five percent of the people simply turn on black and white transparencies using presentation graphics programs. Macromind Director is way at the other end, isn't it? Well, Macromind Director, as you can hear from the sounds in our audience, is different because we combine text graphics, as you've seen in some of the other products, as well as uh, sounds with uh -huh. music and animation. So it's a multimedia presentation and animation tool. That name's been. Uh, become more yeah. popular late, lately, and Macromind okay. Director is the so what uh, we product seeing? of choice. Well, what you're seeing here is uh, Macromind Director in motion. We've got text, graphics, animation, sound, and video. What we're going to look at next is a presentation that was put together from a company that was bidding on a hotel in China, mm -hmm. and they used Macromind Director to show uh, that they could capture the aesthetics of the uh, of building a hotel in downtown Shanghai as well as the neighboring architecture. So we're looking at this example which is showing us how the uh, hotel would appear, where it was located, and Mm -hmm. The quality of the animation and music lend itself very well to that Chinese culture. And again, we're, we're not watching video now, we're watching the computers out there. All the animation you're seeing was generated in Macromind Director. Okay. The color photos here were scanned in from a color scanning scatter, and then we have, of course, the building appearing. Mm -hmm. and what I'd like to do is show you another example of how his Director was used to uh, visualize the construction of a factory floor. Mm -hmm. Rather than present a uh, set of, of, of graphs or slides on creating a factory, uh -huh. it was really important to visualize what the factory would look like. So in this next example, we see uh, a visualization of a factory using animations created oh, wow. in Swivel mm -hmm. 3D, and we're s the company was able to identify potential bottlenecks in the factory, solve those problems by merely creating this visualization. Uh, Dave, how long would it take somebody to produce this particular animation right here? Well, that just animation... In terms of time, just that yeah, animation took a couple of weeks. Most of the, the work was generating the artwork in... Um, 
in uh, Swivel 3D, uh -huh. but once they brought it into Director, it was uh, quite fast to generate this type of animation. Let me show you how easy it is to get started with Macromind Director. What we'll do is create a simple uh, presentation here. We'll start by bringing in a background, and once we've got our background logo for our company, Global Airways, we'll bring in some animated text, and I could just type this text in. We've got a lot of uh, animate uh, auto animate capabilities uh -huh. built in. We'll choose zoom text and I've got my uh, global airways and we'll preview that to see what it looks like and we'll put it up a little bit higher so boom I've got animation right away. Uh -huh. Now what I'll do is add some sound to this by selecting the sounds icon, dragging it down and choosing which sound file I want so we can add sound uh, sound effects and music, and there are a number of music files that come with Macromind Director. For this, we'll add the capability of, uh, we'll add the sound of a little jet. Okay, and that sample sound you brought in from outside? We brought that using uh -huh. in the Fairline Mac recorder, okay. and we'll have the animation then at the end to show how all this might come together. Let's just look at what we've created in uh, just a few short seconds here. We have the text appearing with the sound of the jet, as you hear. Then we move into, let's say, a board of directors presentation uh -huh. where we present on Global Air Airways with the jet sequence. Sales for this year, $65 billion with music to add that emphasis. Uh -huh. A word from the company president with another scanned image, Jill Smith, who has to say... We believe strongly that Global Air will meet its projected revenue. <laughs> and I guarantee you that that would sell the board of directors. <laughs> David, two quick questions before we're out of time here. What kind of hardware configuration does it take to run director here? Macromind Director will run in black and white on a Macintosh Plus SE, and it will run in color on a Macintosh 2, uh -huh. 2CX, and 2X. There are no specialized third-party boards that are required, mm -hmm. although if you want to do video in a window yeah. or specialized video, you would use one of those cards. And how about the price on the products we've seen? Persuasion from all this? $495. And Macromind Director? $695. Right. Available since March. <laughs> Gentlemen, we're out of time. Gary and I would be back in just a minute with some final thoughts. Gary, we saw a lot of complicated stuff, I think, really on that show. I know at one point you asked the guy, do you have to be an artist to do this stuff, or mm -hmm. can an ordinary businessman like you do this stuff? And he said, no, you don't have to be an artist. But I wonder, really, it's like desktop publishing. You know, guys started doing that stuff and turned out horrendous-looking exactly. newsletters. Exactly, yeah. And I think it's really, it really comes down. We saw a range, really, of products uh -huh. on the show. We saw some stuff that was very, very simple, just a word charting kind of a... The black and white overheads. Exactly. You can take it into a meeting and show yeah. it. And then we saw, of course, a little spinning globe in there. And I looked at that and I thought, well, I don't know Could if... Could you do that on <laughs> your own? <laughs> right. And I think another thing that's, uh, that's probably uh, uh, a point is that a lot of these programs do have libraries of, uh, yeah. of clip art. And so there's a point at which you can pull some that stuff in and make pretty fancy looking graphics. I think uh, the graphics. other factor is too, you can do a lot of the stuff on your own, but it takes a lot of time and you have the time to really spend a couple of weeks, like that one animation we saw in Macromind Director oh, at the yeah. factory floor. Uh, you and I are not going to do that <laughs> yeah. so easily. It was very, very impressive, but you know, it was two weeks or something to uh, do at that. Least, just that sure. portion of it. Yeah. Well, that's our look at desktop presentation software for the Macintosh. Next week we'll be looking at desktop presentation packages for the IBM compatible world. Stay tuned now for this week's Computer News. In the random access file this week, Chips and Technologies has announced a complete AT-compatible computer on one board. The motherboard contains three chips to handle all system logic, I.O., mass storage, and VGA. Industry analysts are saying they see a move away from basic PC motherboards that require add-in cards for routine peripheral control. The new integrated motherboard will open up expansion slots for more sophisticated uses. The Chips and Technologies highly integrated AT chipset will sell for only $69. Grid Systems is hosting the world's first pen interface conference. It's a national gathering for VARs and MIS managers involved in the new generation of computers which use handwriting recognition rather than the keyboard as an input device. Grid already sells the Grid Pad computer, a laptop without a keyboard that uses pen interface technology. In Moscow last week, Bill Gates introduced the first ever Russian language version of MS-DOS, and the company also announced it's planning a Russian language version of Microsoft Works for this summer. Hewlett Packard has announced a new color printer for the Macintosh, the HP PaintWriter XL. It was shown for the first time at last week's Macworld Expo in San Francisco. The PaintWriter turns out a full color page in 90 seconds. 
Also at Macworld, Interactive Media Technologies unveiled the world's first professional audio and video control unit for the Macintosh. The IMTX8000 enables a desktop Mac user to operate a variety of audio video sources such as VCRs, CDs, MIDI music devices, laser disc players, and audio tape recorders. The IMTX8000 incorporates sync generation, SEMPTI timecode, and NTSC output. Taking a look at this week's software top 10 for the Macintosh, according to Mac Connection, Symantec's antivirus program SAM is the bestseller this week, followed by Adobe Type Manager, Macintax, Quicken, and Delta Graph. Microsoft Word 4.0 moves into the sixth slot. A newcomer to the top 10 is Suitcase 2 from fifth generation. Pyro ranks eighth. The award-winning simulation SimCity moves into the top 10 in the number 9 slot. And TypeAlign for Adobe Type Manager is number 10. In our software review this week, Paul Schindler takes a look at a new game called Cosmic Osmo. Ah, oh boy, what a life! I'm blown away. My daughters, Marlo, nine, and Ray, five, are blown away. Even my wife's impressed, and she hates computers. We're talking here about the best hypercard game for the Macintosh yet, Cosmic Osmo. Now, it's $70, but it's worth every penny. Since Osmo has a soundtrack, I'll let it speak for itself. My name is Osmo. Let's go ahead in. Senior Osmo, you're always standing around in there. Holy mackerel indeed. If this is what HyperCard can do, sign me up for more Macintoshes. But make sure they have at least a meg of memory. $70, Cosmic Osmo from Activision in Menlo Park, California. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Paul Schindler. Finally, the Bard has made it on a CD-ROM, the complete works of Shakespeare, 300 pages worth of 37 plays, 159 poems, has just been released by CMC of Portland, Oregon. Shakespeare on a disc comes in two versions on the same disc, Queen's English and American English. It includes search and retrieval software, and it sells for only $99. That's it for this week's Chronicles. We'll see you next week. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by CompuServe, which offers online information related to today's subject. Members type Go Chronicles. Non-members call for more information. Additional funding is provided by the Software Publishers Association, by PC Connection and Mac Connection, by Byte Magazine and Bix, the Byte Information Exchange, and by Intel Corporation, Personal Computer Enhancement. For a transcript of this week's Computer Chronicles, send $4 to PTV Publications, Post Office Box 701, Kent, Ohio, 44240. Please indicate program date.